this is Allison with Pictures and Stories and today I wanted to give you some tips on how to properly scan your prints, slides, and other documents to use in a live storybook. Photos that are created for emailing or use on the internet won't have the resolution and quality you need to print that photo in a book. Just because a photo looks great on a computer screen doesn't mean it will look great when it's printed in your book. We've had quite a number of clients, unfortunately, who have scanned all their photos and brought the scans to us to incorporate in their book, but they're just too small to look good in print. We want to spare you the pain of having to rescan all your photos. So first things first. This might seem a little obvious, but cleaning your scanner is the very first step. This will save you a lot of Photoshop touch-up later on. Wipe off your scanner glass and your photo with a clean lint-free cloth like a chamois or a microfiber cloth works well. It's best if you do this before scanning every photo. If you have something sticky on your glass like glue or tape residue, spray a little window cleaner on the cloth, not on the glass, and rub it off. When scanning for print, set your scanner to a resolution of at least 300 pixels per inch or PPI. Web resolution images are usually at 72 or 96 ppi. You can see our logo on the left, taken from our website, looks pixelated when printed. You've probably seen some newspaper or magazine ads that look like this because they grab the logo off the company's website for the printed ad. The logo on the right, scanned at 300 ppi, looks a lot better. In this example, the photo on the left, scanned at 72 ppi, looks blocky and jagged. The photo on the right, however, looks smooth and clear. Because there are so many brands and types of scanners, we can't show you the exact steps for setting the resolution for your particular scanner. If you can't find where to set the resolution, try looking in the advanced settings. Avoid using automatic or quick scan settings unless it shows the resolution, because some scanners default to scanning for the web at 72 ppi. A rule of thumb is to scan at 300 ppi at the final print size. So for instance, if you have a photo that's 2 by 3 inches and you want it to appear 2 by 3 inches in your book, scan it at 300 ppi. However, if you want the photo to appear bigger in your book than the original print, or if you'll be cropping the photo considerably, you want to scan at a higher resolution so you have enough, enough pixels to blow it up. If you want to blow up your photo to twice its original size, for instance, you would scan at 600 ppi. If you want to print at four times its original size, then scan it at 1200 ppi. Some scanners will allow you to keep the resolution at 300 ppi and also specify target photo dimensions in inches. This feature is really handy if you have it. Instead of scanning this photo, for instance, at 600 ppi, you could tell it to scan it at 300 ppi, but set the target print size to 3.5 by 5. Don't try to change the resolution of a too small photo in photo editing software. Just because you can change the resolution from 72 ppi to 300 ppi in Photoshop doesn't mean that it really works. As you can see in this example, the enlarged photo is quite fuzzy. Because of their very small size, 35 millimeter slides should be scanned at 3600 ppi. This will give you enough pixels to print a 12 by 18 inch print. Don't try to scan slides or negatives on a flatbed scanner unless your scanner has a special attachment for it. These attachments can work well, but they're very slow. If you have a large number of slides to scan, we recommend taking them to a scanning service that has a high speed dedicated slide scanner instead of trying to do it yourself. So, what is all this JPEG, GIF, TIFF, PING stuff anyway? Make sure that you set your scanner to save the scan in the proper format. We recommend scanning your photos as TIFF files if your scanner allows it. TIFF is a larger file, but it is uncompressed, which will give you the highest quality scan and allow you to edit it numerous times without degrading, although it does take up more disk space. Most scanners default to scanning files as JPEGs. If this is your only option, fine, but you need to be aware of two things. First, set your JPEG options on your scanner, usually called quality settings or compression level, to the maximum highest quality setting possible. If your high resolution 300 ppi scan is set to a low quality setting, doesn't matter how many pixels you have, it will look like this. Unfortunately, most scanners are set to default to a lower quality JPEG setting, even if the resolution is high. 
JPEGs compress information to save space, which is great if you need a website to load quickly. But if you're trying to get the highest quality for a printed book, JPEG compression can make your photos look like mush. Incidentally, the same principle holds true for taking JPEG pictures with a digital camera. If you only want to post photos to Facebook, then you can set your camera to shoot at a lower quality setting. But if you ever want to print your photos, set your quality settings to maximum, even though you'll get fewer photos on a card. Another thing to know about a JPEG file is if you're going to do some editing to the photo in Photoshop or other software, the JPEG compresses and degrades the file every time you edit it and then close it again. So if you're going to edit your photo at all, even to do basic autocorrections, make a copy of the file as a TIFF or a PSD format first and make your edits on that. You can always make JPEG copies of your scanned and corrected TIFF files to upload on the web later on. Some scanners have auto-correction tools built in that can auto-correct your photos during the scan. Some of these tools work better than others, and auto-correction doesn't always give you the results that you want. Try a few scans with the correction tools on and see how you like them. When in doubt, scan them with correction off, and you can fine-tune your photos later in your photo editing software. If you have a photo that is heavily damaged, there are many photo restoration services that will digitally rebuild your damaged photo. One last word of advice. As with any of the more technical aspects of this process, if you're frustrated or uncomfortable, don't be afraid to get some help with the parts that are difficult for you. As for scanning, professional scanning is generally not terribly expensive, and the hours you save by sending out your scans may be worth the money. Or you can ask a young person or a techie friend to help you. You can also refer to the scanning tips in Appendix A of your guidebook. And be sure to visit the Members section of the HowToSaveYourLifeInABook.com website for more tips and instructions.